Hello, hello! This is going to be another one of my get ready videos before I film my actual video topic for the week. Um, I'm just going to be using these brushes to get ready. I got a request a couple weeks ago to use, show how I use the Chikuhodo Z5, so this is what I'm going to be um, doing this get ready with me primarily for, and also to show how I deal with skin that has been breaking out and has hyperpigmentation everywhere. So, by the title, if you can see, I'm whinging about mosquitoes because, oh my god, they have been absolutely vicious the last two weeks and I've just been bitten, geez, probably at least 20 times. I swell up really bad and they leave scars afterwards and they just drive me up the wall. Benadryl doesn't work. Almost like I've tried everything topical, oral, just like nothing works. So I've probably been running on three, four, four and a half hours of sleep the last two weeks and have been extremely cranky. So yeah, and then when I get that little sleep, I tend to break out a lot. So there's a lot. For me to cover up today, so I'm gonna. So I'm starting with this sort of like peachy, darkish um, concealer. Normally, I use this for contour, but I find it's pretty perfect for covering up these dark areas, like under eye circles, um, hyperpigmentation. So I'm gonna start with that under my foundation first. And I'm sort of patting outward in a spiral motion to blend it out. Like holy crap, they have been so bad, and the reason why I got bitten so many times. I, I have patches, I have the bracelets, I have spray, none of it worked. And then, but I still went out at, in the evenings because it's kind of harvest season right now. So everybody around the neighborhood is kind of picking their stuff, their produce, their fruits. And then they just put baskets out in front of the houses. So we kind of go trick or treating for stuff. And then because I love food so much, that's why I went out and while I was harvesting produce from other people, the mosquitoes were harvesting my blood. But yeah, last two weeks, I think I've gotten maybe 48 hours of sleep total. So I've been super cranky and super broken out. And then today was like the first day where I've kind of, like, kind of fairly felt like myself because I got a full seven hours of sleep. I know it sounds so weak of me. Those of you who are parents, God bless you. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> thank you for having children. Mom, dads, thank you for having me and dealing with me. My God. I have tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> but like, I think my bug bites are also unusually reactive because um, like they swell up to about the size of an orange. Like I have pictures on my phone somewhere. It gets so bad that it like kind of distends the skin and makes it shiny. It's really gross. Like I would show you pictures I have on my phone, except for I think you would click off and never watch again. And then I don't know how, but some of them got me in the place where like your butt meets your legs. So there's that crease part. And when that area swells up, every time you take a step, it hurts like hell. So Part of my French, I guess I'm still a little bit cranky, but it was a terrible couple weeks. Everything is finally going down. I'm still slathering on Bai Hua Yu, which is like a menthol, eucalyptus, camper um, thing, like crazy. But it only lasts about 20 minutes or so before it goes away, so it's a very temporary thing. So if I suddenly get out of my chair and bug off, it's probably because like the itching has come back and I need to apply more oil. Wow, I'm so out of it. Sorry, this is the Sonia G Worker 2. This is what I've been using as my concealer brush. It's normally a medium-sized eye brush, but I really like using this and brushes like it, like say the MAC 217 for applying concealer because of that nice rounded shape. So I can just kind of like pat concealer on and it covers a whole big area. I'm not pinpoint concealing, I'm area concealing which is why I like using these sort of medium size blender eye brushes for this. And this is a very soft goat hair. So even though I still have dry patches everywhere, it kind of just puts the stuff on without irritating my skin or without making the patches more apparent. 
I'm going to be using this Duo Fiber um, foundation brush, Ingold foundation brush today because I find that synthetics tend to work better than natural hair brushes for me when my skin is flaky and reactive. So you don't see all the texture once the foundation is applied. And I'm just patting this. I'm not sweeping it and blending it like I normally do. I'm just patting it like I would a sponge until it all goes, well, into my skin and blend in. And the reason synthetics work better on dry skin, I think, is the same reason why synthetic um, hairs don't quite have the same performance with powder products on um, when applying makeup because the bristles are smooth or smoother. Um, they don't cause as much texture in the end result, but because of that lack of texture, they tend to not work as well with powder products, of course. With the new generation of synthetics, um, they purposefully make the fibers, the bristles, to have texture, so they like mimic the cuticles on new on natural hair. So I can't speak for those, but this is one of the old generation um, synthetic brushes. I've been using another brush today. This is the first time I've broken this one out in a couple months, actually. So I'm just going through my synthetic brushes until I run out of them, then I have to wash them again. Now that my face is kind of evened out, I can see I still need to put a little bit more here and here. So I'm going to go back in with this brush again, except I'm going to go into my foundation color instead of that sort of darker color I used to color correct. And then just pat this in, build up the coverage. I'm not so worried about pinpoint concealing, I just want a blank base. And it's glorious. Today is the first time in weeks I've had to house to myself. It's so quiet, I love it. And a little bit more under here. And then especially here, I find this area tends to get really dark when I don't get enough sleep. So brightening this area up instantly makes me look better. I am going to go through this area again with contour later, but contour is a different color. It doesn't have that purpley reddish undertone. So when I apply contour, it'll look more like a shadow rather than a black hole on my face. Just buffing whatever's left the concealer onto some areas. And I think that's pretty good for my base. Got a little bit more up here to cover. Yeah, but mosquitoes have been absolutely vicious. And I don't know, I swear they get more toxic every year. And it's only been for the past handful of years that I've really noticed this, like that extreme swelling. Like I've even tried taping the bite site. It kind of does work. Taping is probably the most effective, strangely. But like when Benadryl extra strength is not working, it's like, what do you do? The only thing you can do is take Benadryl orally, but that just puts me right to sleep, but only for a couple hours, which is why I've only been getting three to four hours of sleep. So Big help that is. So I'm just going to set my base with this um, loose powder using this Chukuhodo KZ1 brush. Um, I did a series brand overview. Brand? No, yeah, series overview of this line. The Kazan Squirrel powder brushes. That's somewhere on my channel if you just use the find button. It's quite a long video. And it was filmed before I got my new webcam. So I think I will refilm that video, except for I'll make it a lot more brief. I won't do all the brush comparisons. I'll just do a more succinct summary of the line. So that's what I'm planning on doing. Like I have a lot of videos that I want to do and redo. So let me know if you're interested in seeing that or if it's too soon. I can, of course, film it later. But... 
I, one video that I really want to redo is my Sonia G sky face um, brush video because it's been almost exactly a year since I've got those brushes and I think it would be a nice thing to do to redo that video and give my updated thoughts. And then I'm just running this brush all over my face. It's My face is way powdered, but it just feels so nice. So this is like my pampering day out of the week. So there's that. And then I'm also going to use it to apply this pressed powder. It's slightly uh, darker and warmer than my no normal skin. So I'm just going to use it to give my face a little bit of dimension. Just a little. And then of course I've been using it as a powder brush, but in this capacity it can also be used as a bronzer brush. And then this is supposed to be a setting powder, but because it's darker and warmer than my normal skin tone, I use it as sort of a pre-sculpting, -bron pre pre-contouring bronzer. So I can kind of see back uh, and get back where my face uh, bone structure is. Have you tried that thing? Have you gotten into Sukyu? Um, I have not gotten into Sukyu products except for one eyeshadow I ordered because of Delena at of Toys and Co. Blogspot. It's this beautiful grayish green shimmery eyeshadow single that I saw. I'm like, oh my god, I need to have that. But so far, that's my only Sukyu makeup product other than their eyebrow pen. And I have to say, I'm not as big a fan of their eyebrow pen as I do just like using regular powder to you to do my eyebrows. Unless you're talking about the Sukyu brushes. As far as Sukyu brushes go, I think I only have the Sukyu cheek. Is there anything, the great idea about doing, oh, oh, thanks for the reminder about the gift card event. Okay. Okay, so now that I've kind of gotten a little bit of dimension back to my face, I'm going to be using this brush I just picked up earlier this week. Um, this is because I got my flu shot and then they gave out a coupon for, I think it was $5 off 20. So I bought this and some other things I needed, like cotton rounds and stuff. This is the Real Techniques. Um, let me see, what are you? This is their setting brush, but I got it kind of to coop compared to my beloved Chicago T6. Like already, I know it's bigger than my T6, but I'm going to try to use it in the same capacity and see how it works. So I thought it was interesting because I haven't walked by Real Techniques in years that they've kind of updated the handles a bit. This is an old one. They used to have like the black rubberized end and then the matte colored metal. And then now they have kind of matching. So I wonder how that'll hold up to like all the grubbiness you get with makeup eventually. Oh, and then I forgot to mention that the video I'm filming after this is a detail eye brushes video. So if you're interested in small and detail eye brushes, um, and if you have time, please do stay for that. So I'm going to be so like, if you know what I like to do with the T6, I like to use it as a contour brush. Oops, the lighting just changed outside. All the clouds went away. It was really foggy this morning. I was really afraid I wouldn't be able to film a video because it was so overcast, but the sun just came out. Be good to go biking. I haven't gone biking in a while because the smoke from either LA, San Diego, or Napa, it's always been above <laughs> 80 degrees, not 80 degrees, whatever, the AQI has been above 80, so I haven't really gone exercising outside. It's starting to go a little stir crazy. Well, I went outside to do the harvesting and that's about it. I haven't gone outside to exercise. It's a little less precise than the T6, but it gets the job done. So I'm really enjoying it so far. I can say um, the synthetic bristles I'm used to of the Hakuhodo I series. This is less soft than that. But I mean, for a $9, $7 brush, this is pretty good.
And of course, as a setting brush, you're supposed to probably use it to set like areas around the face, eyes. So this is supposed to be a target setting brush, but hey, if you have a brush that you can use for other functions that you like, go for it. And then the reason why I keep going over and over in the, the area is because there's nothing really left on my brush. I'm just using the residual to kind of just layer and layer and layer. And then I'm kind of blending and picking up a little bit more pigment from this area because I think it's a little too strong and transferring it to areas where I think it could be stronger. I don't plan on getting reefer brushes until they finalize their stuff. Like they keep on making changes once in a while and it drives me absolutely nuts because if I get it, I'll always have like the FOMO of, oh my gosh, what if this update to it is better? Like it really annoyed me that once I got all of the Wayne Goss um, cheek brushes, he switched to white hair and I'm like, ah, oh, now I have that curiosity. Are the white haired ones better than the brown hairs? And then at that point, I kind of just rage quit and said, screw it. I'll just not get any of the white hair brushes, except I still got one. I still got the 14 just out of curiosity. But then I got that one. I compared. There's a difference, but not enough for me to rebuy the set in the white hair. So that's why I've held off on reefer brushes. Oh, so they're permanent? Okay, that's good to know. Maybe I will get them. So this is a Chikuhodo Z8. Oh, that's upside down, isn't it? Okay, this is a Chikuhodo Z8. This is Gray Squirrel. I also did a Chikuhodo um, series over uh, Z series overview somewhere. I'm definitely gonna refilm that because it seems to be one of the staple lines people look to, and the current quality is at right now is terrible. So normally I do use this as everything from a setting powder brush to a bronzer brush to a cheek brush, but because I used this on this pretty, pretty bright blush yesterday, I don't dare use it for anything else today. So I'm gonna just kind of keep using this brush for blush until I wash it. And then no, with normal blush, normal blushes that aren't crazy pigmented like this Illamasqua one, I can just wipe it off and reset the brush for use the next day. But with this super pigmented one, I prefer not to. Okay, so there's that pretty pink coralish. It's more of a spring color, but I'm feeling bright today. And then this is a, a highlight brush. This is the Z2, also Chikohodo. And then I'm gonna be using it with this pink highlighter. It's a little bit more on the cool tone side, but it blends in beautifully with that coral. And so the Z2 can be used as a highlight brush like I'm doing it now, as well as a contour brush because that tapered point fits nicely into the cheek hollows. It doesn't quite do the nose like you could, but it's a little clumsy for it since it does have a bit of a bigger body. It doesn't quite fit in there nicely. So this is kind of more of an exclusive face contour brush. Funny enough, the Z-Line does also have a contour brush, but I mostly use this one for it. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more of that highlight and then widen my forehead as usual. FO series versus KZ series. I haven't gotten the FO series yet. I haven't gotten any of them yet. I keep on getting distracted by other brushes like the Kolinsky Radin um, brushes by Koyudo. I was going to get the FO and then that said it was going to be released. I'm like, oh, no, nope, okay. The FO is permanent. This is not. I'm getting the limited edition one first. So priorities. Okay, I think I'm set on face. Wow, I just realized with all the brushes I picked out, this is gonna end up being a Chikuhodo video. This is the Z5. When I did my large eye brushes video, I got a request to show how I use this brush specifically. So 
ask and you will receive. It might end up being a long time later, but you will receive. So I'll probably have to hunt down that person and send her the link for this video. So right now I'm just using this contour color to kind of um, sculpt, not sculpt out, contour out, kind of shade out my eye a little bit and give it that shape. So you can kind of see it's a little bit pulled more this way now as opposed to here. So I'm just kind of using, yeah, using this to sketch out the shape. That's the word I'm looking for. Clearly sleep deprived. Actually, no, I think I normally speak like this anyway. So probably not noticing much of a difference. Okay. So you could see that I was using it like this. And I'm kind of applying it both with the body because I load up the body of the brush and then I use the tip to blend it out. If I apply straight on like that, I end up with this line of demarcation. But if I go like this, because the tips are less dense, they're more sparse, so they hold less pigment and they blend at the same time. So as I'm going over like this, it automatically blends the edge for me. Versus if I go in perpendicular, I end up with all this pigment deposited here because then you have like all the density backing it up, holding all that pigment and depositing it. So then you end up having to do more work in the end to blend it out. And when you blend it out, sometimes you end up with too big of a shape compared to when you go like this, you start with it pressed as close to the roots of your lashes as you can, you kind of work your way out. And then where that tip is, is going to be where your final shape ends. So that's why I like using my brushes like this a lot of times, especially if they're on the bigger side. So that's that. Kashi, are they limited edition? Hmm. I might get a couple just to test them out, but I don't think I'll be getting a set. I'll be just getting them because it's a traditional craft and I do like traditional craft stuff like that. The only thing I worry about is, and this is a very shallow reason, is I'm going to be driven crazy by the fact that the bristles are dyed and I'm gonna think my brushes are perpetually dirty. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's a very weak reason to not get them, but I'm afraid that they will drive me nuts. So now I'm just using the edge of the brush to darken up this part near the lash line. And as you can see, because I start near the lash line, and as I move my way up, it kind of blends out on its own. Okay. Gonna, now I'm going to actually use the tip because I want to drag the color in a little bit more this way. Okay, there we go. And I'm using this sort of mid-tone grayish brown. It's a MAC color. What color it is, I have. I'm also going to be trying some magnetic liner lashes I got when I um, bought the Real Techniques brush. I kind of was skeptical, but then I tested them yesterday. Well, I tested only the liner actually because I wanted to see how durable the liner was. And interestingly enough, the formula is almost like a tubing mascara where it comes off if you apply moisture and you rub. But otherwise, it's pretty sweat proof, which I, I was impressed about. Did a hour of kickboxing and it stayed on and it didn't smudge. That was the most important thing and the most impressive part, it didn't smudge. So I'm gonna try it today with the lashes going, with the lashes on. Yesterday, I only wore the liner because I wanted to see how durable the liner was. So I didn't wear it out and have my lashes and liner half falling off halfway through the day. I'm kind of just going back, back and forth between my eyes, touching up the shape, kind of making them even. And then that's how I'm using this large Shukuhoda brush. So of course I can take my finger, pat on a lid color, or I can use this brush again. I'm gonna use this brush again for the lid color, wipe it off a bit. 
and then use this purplish color for the lid color. Again, I'm using the side of the brush because, or yeah, the side of the brush because it's um, smaller than using the main body of it. That gives me a little bit more precision. And because this is a lid color, I kind of don't care where it goes. As long as it lands in approximately the place I want it to be. And I'm applying from outside in because my, the inside of my lid doesn't have much of that dark shadow on it right now. And then I wanted to kind of fade into the darker shade I laid down. And of course, if I was applying with another brush, like say if it was Goat or Kolinsky, it would have a different effect. I'm going to take this up a bit into this inner corner. Kind of shade it there a little bit. Give it a little bit of color. I know I said earlier I was covering up the purplish parts inside the inner corner of my eye. So probably just undoing all my work. So there's that. Now, the limitation of this Z5 compared to, say, this Shikuhodo, no, this is a Koyudo red squirrel brush, is you can see the profiles. And I talked about these shapes in my large eye brushes video. One of them is has this diamond tip. This one has this round tip. So this one has much more precision. So I'm going to be using this to finish up my eye, doing the inner corner and a little bit underneath. This one doesn't have the ability to do it unless I was doing like a really big winged out smoky eye. So that's the difference between a round, a domed large brush and a diamond tipped large brush. So one of them is better for this whole blending and shape laying work and the other one is better for well placing detail so i'm going to be doing a little bit of let's see what color do i want to use hmm. i think i'm going to be using this color it's showing up as gray on camera but it's kind of this like cool toned purple i'm going to be using this on my outer eye Take off a little bit of that, and then I'm going to be applying it like you would with liner. So I'm laying a little bit down with the side first, and I'm blending with the tip. Same on the other side. So if you like doing those, like, um, uh, faking the eye puffies, diamond tip brushes are especially great for that because they allow you to like, kind of like jam it in and then like create that shadow under the eye and then you can create the highlight on the puffy part. I know that's a technique my sister does a lot because she naturally has the eye puffies but after she applies her under eye concealer to hide the bags, the puffies kind of like get faded out a bit so she reapplies the puffies with a diamond tip brush. She has one of my shoot wear Maritans. <laughs> and I'm just using the tip now to apply this highlighter to the inner corner. And that will finish up my eye makeup. And then the point where I'm applying the white, I'm stopping about halfway into that inner corner. So like you can see the shadow here, that was the previously applied purplish color. Um, the, the pur purple magenta color, I should say, because there's the other purple grayish color I applied under on my outer corner. I'm gonna just take this up and over here. I'm just using the tip and it looks like I'm jabbing into my socket, which I sort of kind of am, but because it's so soft and my lid's quite mobile, I don't feel it. It's almost like something just like tickling my eyelid a bit, but it doesn't tickle. So 
with large brushes like this, part of the way you control your application is by the pressure you apply with your brush. So I'm like barely doing any pressure, but as you can see, it still took the color across. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of more of the purple because I think I took too much of that light color across. So a little bit more purple on the Z5. And then patting it on. So I'm just kind of doing what you would do to pack on color. I'm not really blending or anything. I'm just kind of putting the color on like it's a wash to tint that light color purple. So that's that, that's the eye makeup. It's showing a lot up a lot more frosty and white on the camera, sadly. It's like this nice like ombre purple in the mirror, but oh well, cameras, what can you do? Um, I'm gonna hold off on doing lip color for now because I want to do the eyeliner and eye makeup. So this is the part where it gets real awkward because I'm not sure I'm gonna pull this off the first time. So I'm going to be using this liner brush. This is a Mizuho knife edge like liner brush if my camera will decide to focus one day. This is a blend of, I think, horse and synthetic. It's a blend, I'm not sure, but I really like it because of that knife edge. I pr prefer using liner like this compared to using the liner straight out of the tube because I get more precision for sure with using a liner brush. So bear with me because normally I do it in front of a bathroom mirror and I don't have people watching me. Okay. Recommendations on resilient, yes, soft, natural bristles for setting liquid powder over foundations. When I prefer a paddle, pom-pom, or angled for powder. I personally prefer paddles. I can put it on my to-do list to make a video on recommendations for setting powder brushes. So... I will put it on my Google to-do list. Okay. So I have my mirror here. Okay. So this is the liner brush. I don't like it because it's a little too not precise for me. So I'm gonna kind of coat it here and then go in. And I also haven't done <laughs> eyeliner, I realized, since probably last holiday season. So, way out of practice. And I do like this brush because it's angled so you can see me flipping around to get the best, well, angle of approach so I can get a smooth line as close to the base of my lashes as I can. So I go from having to angle this way here, here, to flipping it around here, here. And I'm kind of just stamping it on rather than gliding it because it does have that sort of um, film former to it. You don't want to go back over it too many times with the dragging. So I'm just going over it stamping and kind of building it up where I see um, inconsistencies. And I love using this brush with the Inglot gel liner. This is probably my one of my favorite um, eyeliner brushes because of that knife edge I can really like push it into the base of the lashes now I just have to remember not to open my eyes fully for the next couple um, 10 seconds while it dries okay, I'm getting a little bit more on my brush getting ready to do my other eye I haven't gotten any of the Yoshiki series. I assume you're talking about the white-handled ones. 
Does your psycho go? I don't see any reason not to get him. And what you didn't see there was I just rotated from this to this because I'm now going to work my way from the outside in. So that's my general advice with brushes you don't know how to use. Flip it around, play with it from different angles, and you'll eventually figure out a good way to use it most of the time. There are a couple brushes I can think of where no matter how much you play with it, it's just not a good brush. But that's far and few between. And then there are other brushes where you can flip them around and you have a million different ways to play with them. So those are on the opposite end of the spectrum. Those are fantastic. Okay. Do a little bit more on this side because the corner of this side is lower than my right eye. So I'm adjusting just a little bit on the upward angle here. So I usually build up more liner on my left eye. Okay. So that's this. And then for those of you who ask how I clean my liner brushes between day-to-day -day use, take Bioderma or some other sort of like gentle um, face cleanser and then I just kind of swirl it down, wash it off. So that's how I do that. Um, gonna let that dry. And then I'm gonna curl my lashes and then pop the magnetic lashes on, do my eyebrows and then do a lip color and then to finally get to doing the detail eye brushes video. This is a lot longer than my normal get ready with me it's because I normally don't do this much. Like honestly, <laughs> Koyudo Psycho Ho is very consistently good. Like there's a couple um, brushes in the Takumi series where I don't know if they intentionally did it, but some of the hairs have a different texture. They're not as smooth and straight. They're more textured, like um, specifically the T2 and the T7. Like those have a little bit more texture to them. Oh, and the T1. But then you have the T4 and it has like a mild texture, but then you have the T5, T6, and T3, which are like silky, straight, smooth hair. So I don't know if they intentionally pick the hairs to have more texture on certain brushes to make it more effective. But Koyudo um, seems to have the same Saikoho across all their brushes, whereas the Fua Fua or the BP series, Rip, or the Mizume Sakura, um brushes so if it's by koyudo and it's psycho i think it's pretty safe to get now the shapes i don't know about those so pick the shapes that you know you like okay curled and it's these lashes um i threw the box away but they're the kissler lashes i got these because they have five magnets some of the other ones i were i was looking at only strangely had four magnets and then I s assumed that the five magnet one would be more even. So that's why I got these in particular and also because they're not ridiculously hairy. Supposed to come on. There we go. And then these are surprisingly light. Like, I wasn't expecting this. So these are a very nice, pleasant surprise. Something that makes up for the crappy last two weeks of no sleep. And I just realized I was 
saying, oh, I'm going to apply lip color. And I realized, oh, I don't even have a lipstick in front of me. So perfect. Hmm. This one's not going on. Okay. I wonder if it's because some of the eyeliner got covered up by eyeshadow. So let's try this again. And I'm confident enough to go in with the actual brush itself right now because I've already laid the groundwork line with my precision brush. So I just follow it with this one. So that's why I went in with the applicator directly rather than using my liner brush this time. I didn't have to trim these lashes surprisingly because if you can see, there's five lashes. So if I had to trim them, I would have had to trim them to the other one. As they are right now, they fit my eye perfectly. Um, let me measure how far they are actually, the length of them, because I'd be curious to find out. I have my calipers with me because I was going to do some official measurements on the detail eye brushes later. So I happen to have these with me. Let's have a go at it. Oh, <laughs> that's great. They're magnetic. <laughs> they stick to my calipers. Oh, this is fantastic. These are 32.3 millimeters. So if you ever, for some reason, are able to measure your eyelashes, this is how big this pair is. And then 32.3 seems to be my length. So yippee. Let's do this again. Oh, much better. Yeah, I guess in between me talking and blinking, some eyeshadow transferred onto the liner and then made it unstickable. Now that we have a fresh coat of liner, the lashes are sticking. So I'm going to grab a spoolie, comb my eyebrows into place, and grab a lipstick because I said I was going to do lip color. So preparation. So the reason why I pre-spoolie my eyebrows is because I have my spoolie loaded up with water and I kind of just run it through to wipe off any foundation. Well, wipe off most of the foundation rather. And as you can see, like it's darker because I'm wiping off all the powder foundation and everything that went over it. So just scrubbing that away. And then sometimes this is just where I leave it. However, because my eye makeup is a little heavier today, I'm going to do my brows a bit. Normally, I'm happy enough with just wiping the foundation and powder off my brows and just leave them as that and just kind of move them into shape. I figure if I'm going to be doing false lashes, I might as well do the eyebrows too. Go hard or go home. There's that. And then I'm going to be using this brush. This is a Badger Horse Mix, and I've really been en enjoying this one a lot for doing my eyebrows. Like, it beats out the shoot or more angled one, hands down. i be using this color again because it's just so much softer, and it doesn't apply lines because the way I do my brows, it's more like adding the shadow underneath the hairs rather than drawing hairs in themselves. I am diffusing it out a bit though. And I'm like stamping and pulling a little bit to blend. And then where I apply the powder tends to be on top of the brow because when the light comes down, the shadow gets cast underneath the hair and it's literally underneath. So I want to kind of pump up the volume a little bit by slapping fake shadow underneath the hairs where they actually lie. That's why I tend to do the top of the brow and also gives the face a little bit of a lift to move the face 
to move the features upwards and outwards a little bit. And that's why I mostly apply on top. Okay. Now I'm going to be using this. This is a Koyudo BP-036. It's technically a detailed eye brush, but because it's Kolinsky, you can use it with cream products, concealer, lip brush, which is what I'm about to use it for. And I'm going to be going for a... Maybe this wasn't the right color. This is a pretty shocking warm red. I think I'll pick another one. Now we're going to be using a more neutral red. This is the Aaliyah by MAC red lipstick. I haven't used this one much as you can see from the bullet. I'm just kind of rolling it around in here. I got it basically because the packaging was pretty and because it's a red lipstick. This is hot light. <laughs> Where'd my shot go? And that's something I like doing to kind of get these lines, and then I'll just color in a cupid's bow with a little bit more lipstick. I prefer using lip brushes to applying directly because, um, well, a couple things. So you're less likely to get it on your teeth because you don't have the overload of product on there, and also because the color is sheer. And it's kind of like how I um, applied the liner with the brush and then the second time through I just applied it directly with the applicator. By applying it through a brush I kind of get to play around and sketch out the shape I want first and if I decide I do want the full on color and then I go on with the lipstick. But like you, you saw how earlier how I was kind of like gumming the brush a little bit like that I for me personally that gets me the perfect side lines versus if I'm going to apply the lipstick normally I end up accidentally over drawing my lips because I like go apply it and then it's not even and because I'm a little bit OCD I keep going over and over it trying to get the line straight but then I just keep making it bigger and bigger kind of like how you accidentally end up making your cat eye bigger and bigger. So you can see how when I'm doing this one long pull, because these bristles here are straight, it allows me to pull straight and then my lip line will be straight. As opposed to when I'm going in like this with my hand across, my hand is going to have micro ups and downs and then that results in a little bit of a jagged edge. Of course, this will depend on your skill, but 
for me, I usually don't have that level of control. So that's why I do that. And of course, yes, I know no one's looking at my face that closely, but I am. So. And I'll be honest, normally I just use a gloss. Like I rarely, actually rarely use lipstick even though I have way too many. And then there are some formulas, some very rare formulas where it's very easy to apply straight out of the tube. Uh, most formulas I do use a brush. I'm gonna go straight on a little bit on the Cupid's bow. Now that I have the preform shape, and also to darker, darken up the center. And this is a little bit of what I'm talking about, that uneven up and down I apply with the lipstick bullet. So I'm gonna fix that with, guess what, the brush. Okay, so that concludes the get ready with me. I'll be I'll take a couple minutes to kind of organize, clean up things around here so the detail eye brushes can go as smoothly as possible. So I'll be back shortly. Thanks for watching and getting ready with me. I'll see you shortly. Bye. Speaking of, yeah, thank you.